Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Making Moves. I'm here today with my dear friend and entrepreneur and fellow content creator, Miss Natalie Barbeau. Hello, I'm so excited to be on the podcast. I'm so excited to be able to chat with you. I know, on it, actually, yeah, because we haven't seen each other in forever. Yes. Yeah. Um. Okay, tell me a little bit, let's do like the 411 on what you've been up to and then we'll talk about how we met. Okay, so... I'm a content creator. I've been one for the past 12, 12 years. Oh my God, yeah, 12 years. Crazy. Started on YouTube in the early OG like beauty guru days. And then I started a company called Rella, which is an app and it's for content creators and their teams to manage their business and also manage their content. So I've been working on that. That's been a journey. Um, so I've been doing that and content creation full time. I live in Miami now. And yeah, that's kind of like a quick 30 second elevator pitch and you're from me. is it north or south carolina north carolina north carolina yeah and you studied engineering in school yes right yeah where did you go again i went to nc state okay did you go to a state school no but everyone thinks i went to iu okay <laughs> that's what i thought university. too i was like wait i know you're from indiana i'm from the iu campus like that's my hometown okay. so everyone thinks i went there but i was like get me out of here because i that was like where i went to high school yeah and, literally my whole life but I went to Fitham okay here. okay so is that must be when we met maybe yeah and yeah. that's why I'm downtown okay mm -hmm. yeah because that was the last time we saw each other I think was I think when you which is crazy downtown. yeah so we met probably I'm not even kidding you in like 2018 yeah probably that 2018 2017 like you were working for Alicia I don't know uh -huh. if you still work for her but yeah you were working yeah for Alicia. I don't I quit in January okay. so it's been like a little time now but crazy yeah I probably was just starting you were because we talked a lot about that on my podcast and I thought it was like so cool and I wanted to hear all about it and like yeah <laughs> look at us now wow that's crazy four years later and yes. I quit <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, that's crazy. Yeah. I, I mean, I learned so much in those four years. But um, time flies. You have an app. Yes. Which I am so genuinely fascinated by. Thank you. Um, by the way, Natalie has always been quite the little entrepreneur. Thanks. And you've always been, like, very businessy, which I feel like is why... I always admired you or just like uh, we ha always had something to talk about because yeah. I, I we love like the business side of this world. Yeah. And you have always been into like the behind the scenes and like the business side. Yeah. And that's why I was always so fascinated when you were working for Alicia. And I yes. wanted to talk all about the behind the scenes of being a creator. What's that like? Like, what do you do for it? Because even when I was doing just like YouTube and I was just like a, a full time creator, I was doing it on the side. Like I always thought of it as how can I make this into a business or how can I grow this or how you're can a I numbers use girl because you're an engineer yeah. yeah so I've always been interested in that and so yeah I mean I never thought I would start like an app or go into tech but oh my I love god it. if you would have told me that I'd be like that makes sense yeah <laughs> really for you yes <laughs> are you yeah. kidding yeah so because I'm not like technical you know like I don't know how to code so I was you know I, I do. <laughs> I took coding classes in Wait, college. Really? Yeah, for real. But That's like, so I would funny. never do that for what? a living. Do you need a job? Like, no, wanna... <laughs> I don't. I, it's so hard and boring. Mm -hmm. and, no, like, I could scary. never do it. Yeah, I could never you could. do it. No, if you did engineering, you could for sure. I wouldn't want to. Yeah, there yeah. we go. Is Rella like number one on your priority yes. list now? It definitely is. I will say that social media content creation has like my heart. You know, like it's always been something that I've loved doing. Like I'm a YouTube girl, so like videos vlogging all of that it's like my favorite thing to do it's so hard for me to get into tiktok even though i'm trying because it's like short form versus long form yeah, it's hard but i've always i love social media and i love ma making content even for myself like i was telling you how i met with keaton right before this and we were saying like even if two people watch us like we will be posting vlogs like in 20 years like uh -huh. i will be posting vlogs for my two followers i feel like it's even for me like to yeah. look back on no for me too for sure yeah i will go and watch my old stuff sometimes like i just like love looking back at those like moments it's so and, nostalgic yeah and so i have always loved social media and so i'm always going to do it and i think it's great for growing a community and like growing a platform but Rella is definitely number one, like in terms of what I'm focused on, what most of my time is spent on. I feel like I've kind of like streamlined social media a little bit, like I can get it done quickly mm -hmm. versus Rella is definitely something that takes up like all my time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, you know what's cool about having a job and I can attest to this because I literally had the job for four years is it kind of gives you like a different purpose or like mm -hmm. a different sense of self when, when it comes to creating your content you're like oh productive work day in my life yeah. like I don't know I feel like now sometimes I find myself 
like treading in the deep end being like, all right, like so many options yeah. of like what I could create content on yep. versus now you're like, shit, I got to get it done. Let's do this work day in my life or like, exactly. you know what I mean? Because a lot of your stuff is still based around what you do in a day or your yeah. work. Yeah, I love vlogging. And so like even like I'll take people into a meeting with me or I'll, you know, film I, I want to always like provide value. I feel like mm -hmm. that's something that You've I've always, always been good at that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I, I always want to do that for especially for like content that maybe not everyone is posting. Like not everyone necessarily has a business, so I can mm -hmm. post the behind the scenes, or like I can post what it's like to be in a business meeting or an investor meeting or something like that, where not that many people doing that are creating content about it. Mm -hmm. So that's why I feel like okay, this is like unique. This is different, even if it reaches just like a small niche of people that care about that. I think it's a little unique to do. So it does give me a, a kind of like a good direction of what to post about. But also, I don't know about you, but like when I do content creation full time, it can feel a little bit more like a job, you know, because it yeah. is. And it's like draining versus now when I do it, it's kind of like my relaxation it's fun, create, and it's fun. Creative time. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yay. I get to like film and edit. Whereas before I didn't really love doing that because mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I have to do that now. And that's like. You're you're really looking at the numbers and you're really looking at your, you know, how much money am I making? Am I growing? Or how many brand deals do I have? Because that's like all like that's what you're doing all your eggs in one basket, which don't get me wrong. I love doing social media full time. Like to me, it was like it is the best job. Whenever we sell Rella, I want to do content creation like mm -hmm. that is like truly what I love. But it's just different when you're doing it as a side hustle now versus mm -hmm. like full-time job it's crazy how everything is about perspective because yeah. like when I was in that full-time job all I wanted like I I would dream about like being a full-time content creator oh, and I yeah. was like oh my god they have it so easy like they can they have so much time to post anything and like if I were a full-time content creator I would be uploading 30 million times a week right you have yeah. all these and then once you do it you're like fuck this like I'm running out of ideas or yeah it's just it, I mean there's harder jobs out yeah. there, but it is funny how like yeah. everything's about perspective. Yeah, and it is a business because like anyone can post content on social media, but like to actually grow it and like continue to make money year after year after year, like that's not that easy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've always been this business girly in my eyes. You've been like very business minded and interested in like startups and whatnot. I feel like you've always like yeah. dipped in with the startup world. Is there someone you look up to who's in that space or do you have like a role model or, you know, a business that you're, you yeah. know, you just look up to for like advice or when you're confused? Yeah, there's not that many people I know personally that I can just like mm -hmm. talk to about that. But I will say that one, there's not that many like women in the space in general, like in the startup world. Yeah, or crazy. Like, even like founders of successful companies, I feel like you don't see as many women, unfortunately, like a Sadly, I feel like it's just like not as common and they're not in Why their do you spaces. Think? The one side of like are women entering that like field, like are they like entering tech? But also I know it's way harder to get funding if you're a woman. It's Why? way I think it's because I don't think it's an intentional bias. Investors want to invest in what they've seen work before. So if they see like the, these 10 companies that they've invested in that have worked, what do they have in common? Oh, it's like this brainiac dude that like sleeps in his office and like, you know, is like dedicated to the work and blah, 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 whatever. And it, I think so when they see someone that looks like that again, they're like, oh yeah, instant success. Whereas if they don't have a lot of women in their portfolio, it's just the, it, it doesn't register as like a pattern they've seen before. So they're easy. It's easier to just subconsciously be like, I don't know if that's going to work. Mm -hmm. I, th I think that that's what it is. I don't think it's an intentional. Oh, I don't want to invest in women because yeah. a lot of funds like want to invest in women. I think it's a lot of that like subconscious like, I don't know if this is going to work because we haven't seen it before. You have investors. Correct? Yeah. Are they male or female? They're actually all men. So, yeah, no, we it worked out for us. And like. I am so grateful, you know, but I do know it's definitely harder. And you can like you can sense that like no one's ever been rude to me or like condescending or anything Great. like that. So I've had a very pleasant experience. But you can just tell, especially because I'm building for creators, the creator economy is a lot of women. Mm -hmm. So like men might not understand that world as much. So they can't like tell if that's going to be successful mm -hmm. or not. You know, so I think it's it's a lot of subconscious bias rather than like intentional bias mm -hmm. I would say because I, I mean I we have like great investors and I'm like so Amazing. appreciative of them and I love them and I hope that that changes in the future yes of ter in terms of like more women getting more funding mm -hmm. but I think there's probably like a lot that goes into it rather than just like 
I don't know. I don't think it's just like women aren't getting funding. I think there's a lot that goes into it, but it is subconscious Mm -hmm. as well. For sure. How many investors do you have? We have five. So five. Wow. Yeah. Venture funds that invested in us. Okay. Let's put a pin in that. I want to talk about Roa first and then we'll talk about the investors. How the heck did you come up with this idea? And I guess for someone that doesn't know, what the heck is it? Yeah. 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 So I, like I said, I've been a creator for a long time and I was doing it as a full-time job. So I was able to quit my job, do it full-time. I was getting really frustrated, which I don't know if you felt this way, with like all of the different tools I was using to run it, like notes on my phone, spreadsheets for keeping track of brand deals, project management tools to like communicate with my manager, um, content calendar for, you know, like planning my Instagram and TikTok and YouTube and all of that stuff. And I just thought like, why is there nothing out there that's just all in one spot and where we can like plan our content, keep track of brand deals, upload our like media files, keep everything in one place, like files, contracts, briefs, all of that stuff. Um, why can't we just like have that in one spot instead of a million different tools? And so once I started like feeling that like problem a mm-hmm. lot, I started asking my friends, like, what are you guys using mm-hmm. for it? And everyone kind of said the same thing. We're using spreadsheets. We're using project management tools. We're, you know, kind of like keeping track of all of our income on our the notes in our phone, which I thought was like crazy. And there was no like solution out there. So and I'm a very impulsive person. Like I'm very like all in like when I wanted to start a podcast I was like I'm just gonna start and I bought a mic that day you know like I don't really think things through (laughs) which can be good and bad um but with this I was like wait this is such a good idea like why don't I start it and I did not know what it took to start a startup or to start an app like I'm I went in blind but I was like okay I want to I want to start this thing so like let's just do it I put together a document of like everything I wanted it to look like and like how what features I wanted it to have and how I wanted it to run And then I started talking to developers because I knew that I didn't know how to code. So I was like, let me just like reach out to a bunch of developers. I looked up like how much does an app cost? Like all of this stuff. How much? Like if you look that up, how much would it say? For me, it was like, oh, it's going to cost like 60,000 or 40,000 or something like that, which I think it costs probably way more. Like for me, I I can't gauge exactly how much it costs because my co-founders, I found co-founders. And so like they did it for equity. You know, it wasn't Mm. like I was paying them to do it because we're all in it together now. So like it was equity based. So it depends on who you hire, how much it is. That's why like sites like that, it doesn't, it's not accurate. You know, like if you kind of look up like how much do influencers make? It's like all over the place. Like Mm -hmm. no one knows because it just depends. So I started talking to developers. I eventually met my co-founders through a mutual friend and then we started building it together. Okay. Talk to me about the co-founders finding them. Yeah. Finding the founders. So I was speaking to other developers in like different countries and different websites and I just like didn't really like any of them. I felt like they didn't really understand what I was trying to build or like what this was. It felt more like a project where I knew I wanted this to be something a little bit more. And so I reached out to a friend because I went to NC State for engineering. So mm. I was like, there's got to be people here that know how to code. Like, mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like I, someone I know knows how to code. And so my friend, I asked him, I'm like, do you know anyone that knows how to code? And his like fraternity brother started a software company um, where he like helped other companies develop their applications. And Whoa. so I met with him. And that ended up being him and his like business partner ended up being my co-founders. And so they were already developing apps for other companies. Were you looking for a co-founder at this time? Not exactly. I, I thought that I could just like pay them. Like at first I was paying them a little bit to like just work with me on this. But once I started seeing how much work went into it and how big this could be, I was like, OK, I want someone like in-house. Like I want someone on the team. I don't want to do this by myself. And they really liked what I was building. So they actually reached out to me first and they were like, we really like what you're doing. Can we join in with you? Like, Can this Which, become a business? I have to say, how rewarding yeah. having someone believe in you so much they're asking you to be a part of the business. Yeah. Like, no, yeah. That's no. crazy. That'd be like me, someone like begging to work for me. Yeah. And like, because they are invested in me and think I can grow, you know? Exactly. And it was all for equity, which means they like really believed in it. Wow. You know? So our investors, we raised $1 million. And so that. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> Natalie. <laughs> So that's going to get diluted once that once their shares convert. Like they technically haven't converted yet until we raise the next round. So all of us will get diluted a little more. So you made this app and then you got the co-founders and then what's the next part of the story? 
So started with the co-founders and then we were working on it for like months before it ever launched. Because they had a software company, they had designers already, like apps, like UX designers. Mm -hmm. So they brought them along. Those girls are still with us today. Like they're still on on board. Um, our first hire was Natasha, who's like our head of product. And so we got so lucky with the team. Like we have such a good team from really early on. And so, yeah, we started working on it. And then in January of last year, we launched the first version, which is like not was not great. Like it was pretty much just a content planner. Um, and so much goes wrong with tech. You know, there's always bugs. There's always yeah. things going wrong. But yeah, we launched in January and it was so scary before we launched because it's like, it's your baby, you know, like you're talking about it, you have this idea, but it's like once it's out there, people can judge it for themselves. Well, also when you're a content creator, you have all these eyes on you already, yeah. which is like a blessing and a curse because yeah. what if you fuck up? Exactly. And so thankfully, like it was so well received, which is great. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I know it was so scary. We actually had a plan like as a team, we wrote down everything that could go wrong, like the app crashes, people are leaving us negative reviews, this doesn't work, um, too many people are on, no one joins, whatever. We had like a list of everything that could go wrong and we wrote down like what we would do if that happened. So like for peace of mind, like if something Problem goes solving. wrong, mm -hmm. we have already the solution for it. We don't have to like scramble in the moment. Highly recommend if anyone's starting something to do that because it gives you peace of mind that, mm -hmm. okay, if something does happen, we know what to do. Thankfully, nothing happened on that list. But like if it did, we were prepared and like knew what to do. Mm -hmm. I love that. I mean, this is this is crazy. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, what a journey. So you launched the app and what version are you on now? Oh, God, I don't even know the version. Like so many like we're releasing new versions like every week like just with like fixes you know when did so, you launch it originally january 2022 is there a desktop version yeah so it's on web and mobile um and we've have like seventeen thousand creators that have signed up so and i signed up today oh yay i'm so excited and it's all organic marketing too so we haven't spent money on ads or anything no way mm -hmm. is it free so it's a free version and then a paid tier, but we're actually redoing our business model and we're doing free trial to paid tier. So like you'll have a free trial, but then you will have to pay mm -hmm. and it's going to start at $20 a month. Oh, that is, that's worth it. No, yeah. It definitely saves people time. It saves people money. So like I think it's well worth it and we want to be as affordable as we can and we're competing. I mean, I always say we're competing with tools like Notion and Excel and like those types of tools because I think we do so much more than just content planning. But if you look at apps that are just content planners like later or plan only or like those uh -huh. types of apps which we do a lot more than that those are like 25 dollars minimum a crazy. month you know so we do want to be affordable like we want to be for the person that's starting out and or if you're making money you can use it like mm -hmm. for any type of creator um and so we want to keep that in mind exactly it's a write-off mm -hmm. <laughs> okay so you get these co-founders and then are you like fuck we need money yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, my co-founders were working for zero dollars. Like yeah. they were making no money at all. They and had to do brand side deals jobs. Just paying for your yeah, cost of living. Yeah. I had content creation. So I yeah. was in a much better spot than they were in terms of like income because mm -hmm. I was already being I was already a full time creator. So like I already had full time income. Um, So they were taking like side jobs to, you know, pay their rent and like pay for their bills. But they were doing this for equity for a very long names? time. Connor and Nick. Connor and Nick, shout out you. Yeah, shout out you guys. Shout yeah. out Connor and Nick. <laughs> and so they were doing it for a long time um, for for free. And I mean, we all were. But so when we raised money, we were like, okay, we need to raise money, one, to hire more engineers and also to like pay ourselves and to just like scale the, mm -hmm. the business. So yeah, we ended up raising a million. And that's crazy because when I started Rella, I had no idea like about raising money. I didn't know anything about startups. I didn't know what that meant. Like I really knew nothing. I didn't have connections in the space. I did not. I was I didn't go to school for that. We knew nothing. So everything was like, OK, let's learn as we go. How did you even start? With getting investors, we reached out first to like alumni from North, like in NC State, because we we're like, oh, we're all NC State grads. Like, surely they'll, you know, want to support us. We ended up not having any North Carolina investors because they're very, very like risk averse. Creator economy is not something that they know anything about. Mm -hmm. It's more like old school. Mm -hmm. It's getting there, but you know, it is. It, it, they're going to regret passing on that one. Exactly. No, but it is. It is a little bit more old school for that. So. 
at first we were talking to them though, like just like anyone. I looked up like the word investor and then NC State on LinkedIn to like see who came up and I would message them or I'd reached out to like professors and be like in the business school and be like, do you know anyone? This is what we're doing. Eventually I started That's reaching so out. Yeah, no, LinkedIn is your friend with this. I love LinkedIn. Uh, yes, me too. And or you can like, I started reaching out to other founders and I would just DM them and be like, hey, like, I'm a founder as well. I'm just getting started. Would you mind like hopping on a phone call and like chatting with me? And I learned so much from other people. And then I would just cold email and cold message investors and be like, here's our pitch. Like, let me know if, you know, you want to have a conversation. And most people don't respond. Like I would say it's like 70, 30. And that's like good. Like 70, 30 of like 30 percent of people responding. How many like like, emails did you send? Well, I, I don't even know how many emails, but we spoke to, like, actually spoke to over 200 investors. And, like, we got five, you know? So it is a numbers game. You have to pitch. and You've got to put in the work. Oh, yeah. And you get rejected all the time. And you just have to not take it personally. Because, like, you never know what investors are looking for. And it's so much about, like, what they are investing in, like, what type of, cre- what type of uh, business they're investing in, if they even know about the space, how much like what the average check size is you know you have to find someone that's investing like in your space in your stage believes in you Mm -hmm. and so it's a numbers game you just have to talk to everyone so what are you saying to them like to pitch rella like how are you trying to convince them yeah so we have like a little blurb where it's like that sentence that i kind of said in the beginning like we're a digital workspace for creators and We'll say that we'll use any like impressive numbers like we have 17,000 users on the platform um, and we will mention then like I'm a creator. Like my story is a huge part of it because there's so many people that might be building in the creator economy that are not creators themselves. So they need to rely on like feedback and they need to rely on like talking to other Mm -hmm. people to figure out like what the problem actually is. Whereas like I have lived and breathed this for over a decade and like I it came out of like a need that I had. And so that story of being me being a creator for 12 years and being able to do it full time and like having, you know, a following Mm -hmm. helps so much when it comes to this. So that was like the story we sold was like, hey, this is what we're building. This was the pain point that Mm -hmm. I had faced. This is why I know it's going to work. This is how many people we've been able to bring on without spending any money, you know, and like all of that. It's really casual and I know it doesn't sound like it but like you are just having a conversation like yeah we have a pitch deck but like you are just talking to them you're trying to connect yes and I think that's one big thing you need to build relationships with them because they're just people and they're going to invest if they believe in you like Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you could have a really impressive pitch deck but like if they don't really connect with you as a founder they're going to pass like they need conviction in you and you need to build trust with them and that's why you need to have a lot of conversations and you need to have a good reputation like it when you're speaking to people or like mm-hmm. even it maybe in the beginning if you're not raising what you think you're going to raise in the future just start meeting investors just to put your name out there yeah so like going you, on dates yes so when you do start raising you can be like hey remember me and then it's so much easier to connect rather than yeah. like hey we just met for the first time but can you write me a check of like two hundred fifty thousand dollars? you know yeah. that's like that's that's Crazy. a little harder at the end of the day are you asking for a specific amount or are you just like whatever you'll give us type of thing yeah, so we say how much we're raising. Like at first we wanted to raise 750,000 and then we ended up raising a million, which was great. But Bananas. We would yeah, so we we would say like, "Hey, this is how much we're raising." For the first check, it was so hard to get. Like it took us months to get that first check. When our the first investor wanted to invest, he was like, "Hey, I want to go in on this. Like I want to invest." And then he said how much he wanted to invest. So he's like, "Okay, I want to invest 250." He um, said that. Yeah. Were you guys like freaking out? Oh, yeah, no. Oh my God. So Screaming, crying, growing up. <laughs> my co founders lived in North Carolina. So one of my co founders is actually in Miami now, but he lived in North Carolina and my other one still lives there. Immediately booked a flight to North Carolina and we like celebrated. Like, we were I mean, like, that's bananas. This is like, we still have so much work to do, but we need to like celebrate this accomplishment of because it was months in the making. $50,000 is a fuck ton of money. Yeah. And so I flew to North Carolina for literally one day, like just one night. We got like dinner together. We like celebrated with the team. Um, I flew back, you know, and just because like that, I just was pitching for so long for months and months and months and never heard a yes. I didn't even know what a yes would sound like. I was like, I don't even know. Do they tell me how much money they want to put in or do I need to ask for it? Like I had no idea. So he's like, okay, this is how much money we're going to put in. I want to add this like valuation whatever and like signed it that night like got the contract that night to sign and then within a week the money was wired 
Like it's quick. Okay, is it like on the DL? Who are your investors? Or are you allowed to say no, who I they are? Say okay. Who yeah, was, who was so the first one? Liquid Two was the first one, which it's a fund, but it's Joe Montana's fund. I don't know if you know who that is. The, the football. Player? Yeah, the football player. Whoa. So it's his. He like started a fund. Um, he played for the 49ers, right? Yes. Okay. So I we got to meet him in San Francisco. It was so Shut funny. up. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that makes so much sense. He is he live in San Francisco, yep. and yeah, that's like the tech hub. Yes. So wait. So how did you even get like uh, him on the roster? So I never met. I didn't pitch him specifically. I met someone that like works for him. Okay. And what's his but like company called? Liquid Two. Liquid Two. And yeah. It's just him like investing in things so he is like he started the fund but like funds investment funds have to raise from other people as well so like they're kind of like companies in themselves where they're raising from lps which What's is like an investment fund so a venture fund has gps which is general partners so those are the people making decisions at that fund those general partners though have to invest from richer people or like richer funds or you know like think people with more money saying like hey invest in this fund and we will invest your money into startups so there's that those are lps where like lps will then invest in funds so that the funds can invest in startups okay so it's like three layers um and i didn't know any of this so like excuse me if i am saying something wrong no it's okay you're speaking Um, a different language so i'm trying to keep up but yeah and so he I just started a fund, and so he like raised from LPs. I'm sure he has a lot some his own money in there yeah. as well, but it's not all his money. Um, but he is like the face of it. It's like his fund. Mm-hmm. Like the chain smokers have a fund. Chantel Jeffries has a fund. What? Yeah, yeah. So like you just pretty so much is she investing in like she. Is, I don't know how active like she personally is, or if like she hired people to be active in it. But I know because I don't know anything about her fund really. Like Jay Z has one. But I know, like, the Chainsmokers, for example, uh-huh. like, Alex from the Chainsmokers is very involved in the startups that he's investing in. Whoa. Yeah. Well, yeah, they have the Haha Tequila, right? Oh, I don't know if that's you know probably. The, you but... know the brand Haha? It's, like, mm-hmm. J-A-J-A yeah. Tequila. That's their brand. Oh, it is? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they're, like, very business savvy. I don't know if it's, like, what they've invested in or their, like, own brand, yeah. but that would make sense. Yeah. No, they're very, like, businessy and business-minded and they've invested in like cool things interesting so, yeah so his joe montana's fund was the first one we got to meet him at like a portfolio party in in san francisco or once we closed the round we went to san francisco and like there just happened to be like a party then um at his fund so we went and got to meet him and like i don't know anything about football yeah. so like he's iconic i didn't know who he, he was, was. Like, a huge football player like, yes no i know really that well now yeah but I remember like texting my family. I'm like, do you guys know who Joe Montana is? And they're like, yeah, yeah. of course. And I'm like, oh, OK, well, he's his fun just invested in us. You know, like I, I did not know who he yeah. was really. But what was he like meeting him? Super nice. Definitely pulled in a million different directions. So you want, you could tell everyone wanted to meet him, you know? Yeah. So it was very like short, but yeah. very nice. And his son works at the fund. Like he's pretty active. Whoa. Yeah. OK, so you get the 250K. Mm hmm. And from Joe Montana's fund. How cool. Yeah. (laughs) And then you're like, okay, now what? Yeah. So now we have to close the round. Like we. What does that mean? Oh, we have to raise the 750 or whatever else we wanted to raise. So, but once we got that first check in, it was so much easier to close. I'm not going to say it was easy, but like within a month, we pretty much almost closed the round. And I was like raising for like six months, you know, and then within one month, we pretty much got it done because investors also like to follow other investors so it's like oh okay like if this person invested in you then i don't really it's need to do the work of like influencing yeah it's like oh they're Joe Montana influ- influ- or yes. invested i want to do that exactly so it's like oh, okay if they invested then like i trust their judgment so yeah. i'm gonna also write a check so that's it was a lot easier to raise from other funds um once so who's happened. the next investor the other one was Precursor, which no one like famous is attached to that name, okay. but um, Charles is amazing. He's like such an amazing person. He's the like owner of, or like the founder of the fund. And then it was Goodwater, which was another one, and then Hustle Fund, which is another one, and then Charge, which is based out of New York. Um, so those were like the names of the funds that. Are there any in. other famous people involved? <laughs> like, give me the celeb I know, gossip. I'm like, uh, no, but I this round. So we're gonna start raising again. Why? How much? We want to raise like one to one point five million. In addition. 
Yeah. Okay. So we raised that last year, and we're trying to raise again this year our seed round. So that was pre-seed. This is seed. It's like all of these terms that okay. make no sense. No, this is great because I feel like girlies like me listen to this podcast, and this is like yeah, the girly version of investing. Like, yeah. like we I mean, need I to know. knew nothing. I like, need to know. Like, I literally knew nothing, and I think it's really intimidating, all of these terms. Um, yeah. And they make it intimidating on purpose. Like, also, there's no reason are for that. dicks. Like, they're like, oh, you don't know what a seed is? Yeah. It's like, no, I don't think about the Roman Empire yeah. <laughs> every five seconds. I don't. It's not as intimidating as it sounds. Like, it's really, at the end of the day, having a conversation with someone and being like, do you believe in this? And do you think it's going to grow? And if you have the means to invest in it, which... You have to think about like these funds that are investing in startups, their job is to give you money. They have to deploy their capital. Like and their job is to find a, a yes. good business. To, so yeah. like they also have a timeline of like some funds are raising like a hundred million dollars. So like if they've raised a hundred million dollars, that a hundred million dollars needs to be gone in like two or three years. Like that's they crazy. Have to invest it's like in. a brand's marketing budget. They're yes. like shoving it in December to all the influencers. Yes, it's like they have to get rid of it. They have to. No one is like doing you a favor by investing. They should be honored to invest because your company is going to make them money. It was really hard for me in the beginning to be like, oh my God, that's so much money. Like, are you sure? But then I'm like, wait, no, I believe in this so much. I know it's going to make you money. So like you should want, like I'm giving you an opportunity Mm -hmm. to invest rather than please like give me money. You know, it's not like a charity. It's like (laughs) that money is going to grow. So it's, especially if you believe in your business, which if you don't believe in your business, then you shouldn't be raising in the first place. So yeah, I think it's, a mindset shift, which I think it's a lot easier for guys to make that mindset shift of like, yeah, you don't want to come in on this round. Like you're missing out. Like it's so much easier for them to be like, all right, you got like a week to tell me I got people knocking on the door when they literally have no one. But they'll be saying that because they're just like, know that that works. I am not like that. I can't like BS. Like I'm not like, oh, my God, like, yeah, we have so many people on the door. Like you better invest right now when when we don't, you know? So I've taken a more like honest approach, but mm-hmm. it seems to work. So why do you think guys are better at I don't that know. Stuff? I've just like found it like for example, imposter syndrome is such a huge thing that I have dealt with a lot. I'll ask my co founders, I'm like, Do you guys ever feel that way? And they're like, No. I'm like, Oh, okay. That must be nice. <laughs> like I just like I don't know why. Like, I have no idea why that is. Maybe it's because you don't see as many women doing it. So you're like, am I in the right space? Mm -hmm, You mm -hmm. know, like, am I am I really in the right spot to be doing this? But yeah, I have no idea why it's like not as common from what I've seen. Yeah. But I wonder if it's like, well, one, just the genetic makeup, like women tend to be more emotionally intelligent and Mm -hmm. like see emotions and like guys don't think about that stuff as much yeah which like I always have to tell myself like being my own business owner I constantly am telling myself like embrace your inner Chad (laughs) and like be a dick right now that person (laughs) fucked up tell them yeah I'm like why do I feel like I'm gonna hurt their feelings yeah no it's definitely I I, and I wish I was more of an ass yeah I didn't care I know that's but I care yeah in the in like this the world of like being a business owner it's like sometimes you have to be rude like sometimes or, or maybe not, not even rude, rude. not just even straight rude. up just straight up but that can come across as rude you know like be like you said your inner chat like yeah. releasing that and I feel like it's really hard because I'm like oh I don't want to hurt their feelings or like I don't know what if I, I no it's fine it's fine it's fine and then you get like walked all over you know yeah. so you kind of have to do that sometimes but also I I think it is refreshing to also be honest like in this especially when I was saying like oh yeah we got so many people interested you better come in like yeah like big dicking them yeah Yeah. when people can see through that sometimes and I feel like it can be refreshing to be just honest with people about where you're at I think that's honestly why we were able to when we closed our round especially our last investor like I wasn't acting like I knew everything I was being like you know what these are some of the challenges we're having I don't know about this. Like, I'm not too sure about this. They're like, this is something that's like not going too great right now. And I honestly think that that was refreshing Mm -hmm. because like I don't. And he was like mentioning, he was like, yeah, thanks for being honest and not trying to like act like, you know, everything because that's, you know, investors can see right through that, too. Well, also, a lot of people just in general don't like to be big dicked or walked all over. Like, it's not the best feeling. No, it's not. And especially when. 
you're you know you know that the person is like not being truthful or yeah. like it's just it's easy it, to see through. it's easy to see and then you kind of look it's like embarrassing mm-hmm. was joe's company or whatever his fund was it the biggest contribution no it actually wasn't our last check was the biggest contribution actually for how much it was four hundred thousand. holy shit yeah so that one was the biggest one and are these like are these just like billionaires so they do raise from billionaires. Okay. Yeah. They are there there's such things as like family offices and family offices is pretty much like some a really, really rich family that maybe like I don't know, like the Walmart family or something, you know, yeah. might have a family office where they are hiring people to take care of their money and like deploy it, invest like somehow. invest it. You know, like I'm sure a portion of their capital, a portion mm-hmm. of their wealth is set aside to like invest in startups. And that'll be like a family office. Or sometimes there's like three families that join together for mm-hmm. it and they'll make like one family office. But yeah, it's just like a lot of really, really rich people. Mm-hmm. I don't know who the LPs are. I don't know who they're raising from. Crazy. I'm sure I can find out. Like I, I think it's public knowledge, but like I haven't <laughs> looked mm-hmm. into that really. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you get this money, the $1 million. And what's the first thing you're using it for? Hiring people. So we wanted to stay still like lean and small. So we are, we're a team of six total, three co-founders, three additional people. Mm-hmm. Um, but we started paying ourselves. So that was the first thing. And then also paying our engineers and our like head of product. So they were both with us from the beginning. They were making very little money for like industry standards. Like our engineer could have been making more than double somewhere else. But I think they both like really believed in us as well. So that meant so much to us that they mm-hmm. like stuck around with us. So like That's actually amazing. paying them a fair salary um, and like s- competitive with ind- the industry. So that was the first thing. And then we hired one additional engineer. So wow. that was like the those are like the biggest things we, we spent our money on. And can you talk a little bit about like more the details of what Rella has to offer? I know you can like content schedule like if you're telling me i just downloaded it like what the heck should i use it for yeah so you can plan out your content on there so plan out any platform so your entire content calendar it can auto post and all of that but i honestly don't use it for auto posting i just set it to like remind me of like when i need to post and what's going up and then you can actually like brainstorm your content so like there's an idea for your content ideas on there that like doesn't have a date you just want to you want to like jot it down quickly okay so it's like a note yeah and then you can like click on into that content idea and actually like build it out so you can set a date if you want but you can add notes to it you can add if it's sponsored or not you can add media files attached to it um you can add links like if there's like a campaign brief or maybe tiktok sound inspiration whatever it's kind of like notion meets a content calendar okay and then when you're ready to schedule it you can add it to your calendar straight from there wow you can have like your to-do list items attached to each post or just like an individual to-do list item for Mm -hmm. content um, and then you can also keep track of brand deals. So I have all of my brand deals on Rella. So I know how much money I'm making in total from my brand deals, when I need to get paid by. So like, what am I supposed to be making in October? You know, like I know that. Or like how many, you'll see like a summary of like brand deals by month, brand deals by platform. Like how much money did each platform make you? And like, you can actually get insights on that. Mm-hmm. You can tell you when something's overdue or not. Uh, like if a payment is overdue, you can share previews with brands on there. So you can Whoa. like, Upload your media file, copy a link, and like send it to a brand. So it's actually all so organized. So it's directly really for creators and influencers. Yeah. And their managers, yeah. And Because you can actually add add people onto your Rella workspace. And uh-huh. you can have like multiple workspaces if you have like your podcast and your personal or mm-hmm. whatever. One thing I wanted to talk about you, which I love about you, and you're so good with like personal relationships and keeping up. And like really the reason why I'm having this on this podcast, you hit me up and I was like, oh my God, yes, I love Natalie, like whatever. And you have just such a cool story. But you, when you came out with the app, Every single person that shared it, or I, I listen to a podcast and you're saying this. Yeah. Every single person that shared it, you personally sent a video yeah. just thanking them and like just going through the list of people and sending them a quick video and thanking them. I think that's so fucking cool. Thank like you. Like basically giving them their own cameo. Yes. No, because I was like, you know what? This is something I've been working on for so long. And if you are going to take the time to share it, even if it takes one second to like, share it how many things do you use on a daily basis that you never post about like yeah. so many so like the fact that you are promoting this without me having to ask you or anything means so much uh-huh. and so literally the least i could do is send you like an actual personalized message rather than just a generic copy paste because like yeah. you can tell when someone's copying and pasting a thank you or you know a message like that so it was really quick it was like a 15 30 second video yeah. and i was like hey taylor like thank you so much for you know posting this like it means so much to me if you guys if you have ever 
ever have any feedback, questions, like please let me know. So kind. It was like a direct line, yeah. you know. And oh my God, I would freak out if like a creator I followed sent me that. Even right now, I'd be like, oh my God. Yeah. Fuck, I do. <laughs> like yeah. that's crazy. So it was like super, it was something, it literally took all day to send those videos because mm-hmm. we had so many people share it. But I could tell that it actually like made a difference. Like, it honestly inspired me because like I really haven't come out with that much as like being a creator and I will be coming out with merch soon. But it reminded me, I was like, oh my God, if and when I do come out with the merch, like I would love to do that for yeah. anyone that buys it. Like that's yeah, that's so simple, but awesome. And you like know, and it means so much. You know who did that to me that like really inspired me to do it? Who? Ed Milet. No way. Yes. So I oh my sent God, I would him, freak out. I would fangirl. I know. I screenshotted his like a podcast I was listening uh-huh. to with him and I posted it on my story. And then I got a voice message and I was like, what? And I was like, is this like a generic voice message, you know, that he sends to everyone. And he was like, hey, Natalie, thank you so much for sharing the podcast. Like, I'm just, like, so grateful. Like, and just, like, a personal message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, wow, like, that didn't, like, you did not have to. I've never gotten that before. Yeah. And that is what I was like, I'm going to start doing that Mm -hmm. to people. So, and it's so easy in Instagram. It's not like you have to so easy. do it on your camera roll and then like upload it to Instagram. Like it's just right Same there. Same with the audio message. I use that. That's yeah. how I like, book guests for making moves. I'm like, hey, I'm such a huge fan. It's so much more personal, I feel, yeah. because like you can actually hear my voice and hear how excited I am. And it's on a copy paste. Yes. Which you can tell if it's like a copy paste. And I um, also have like the attention span of a literal goldfish. Yeah. So like if it's if the message is longer than like three I sentences, can. I'm like I can't read this. Yeah. If the if it doesn't pop out right away, I'm like uh, later. And I'm like yeah. and then I just never happens. Yeah. Exactly. So the audio message in the video is such a good idea. And the audio message intrigues you. You're like, what yeah. do they have to say? So why are true. They, I'm like, why are they sending me an audio message? Mm-hmm. Like I'm so curious about what they have to say. Mm-hmm. Especially then, as when you get a influx of dms on a regular basis yeah it's interesting to get the audio message because i have to like approve the person when i yeah. can for, in order for me to listen to it exactly so that's like how you get them i know and also it's like i so i just got one the other day and i have I, or today and i haven't listened to it yet but i'm thinking about it and yeah. i'm like i'm gonna listen to it when i have time like You're it's like, like oh, yeah. you want to know what they have to and say you have their your or you want to give them your full attention when you listen. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Life hack. definitely do that if you come out with merch. Just do like a video audio message. Like it means so much to people. And it's honestly, I'm not going to lie. It is quicker than typing. Like it it's, is. it's quicker than typing a message. It is. And it's so much more meaningful. OK, I want to talk about now you getting more money. Mm-hmm. What is the more money for? So, again, it's like to hire more people so that we can like expand the app. Like we're actually so rella right now is mainly for individual creators like you can add your manager and stuff but it doesn't have all the collaborative features that we really want it to have or that Mm -hmm. we it our roadmap is so long of like everything we want to do that Mm -hmm. in order to do it quickly like we just need more people and more help we also do want to dedicate like marketing dollars towards it because we haven't spent any money on marketing yet so we do want to start like promoting it working with creators do you have like influencers that recommend it yeah, we like do. Like influencer and friends and stuff? Yeah, and they've been like TikTok posts about it and story posts mm-hmm. about it. So that's been really nice. But like nothing like dedicated, mm-hmm. you know, or like. How much do you, how much have you noticed an influx of downloads when someone shouts it out? Honestly, it's like, so I don't notice it as much when like an individual shouts it out. But if we do like a I don't know, like if we're very active on social media that week and we're constantly posting, I notice a huge jump. Really? Yeah. Of like, because people are finding us on social media or if I'm like on podcasts or if I'm, if someone, if if we have a lot of things going on in one week, a lot of people will, like there'll be a spike in downloads. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, and you have 17,000 downloads? 17,000 users. So we have more downloads than that because some people download it and like oh, never make an it. account. 17,000 you know? users is a lot so, of users. Yeah. So that's been like really cool to is see. Is that like crazy? Like something you started like 17,000 people are using? Yeah. No, it's really crazy to think that. And like what makes me happy is when it lives outside of me because like yeah. I think originally, obviously, the first people, it was because of me. Like it was my following, mm-hmm. it was my audience. Now though, people are follow- like people are using it and emailing us and scheduling calls with us and it's not from me. Like I'll jump on a call and I sometimes like a, a think that I they just know who I am and because I'm like, oh, I'm the founder. Like I have to like remind myself that not everyone that uses Rella knows who I am. Like they downloaded it because they saw it somewhere else Crazy. and that's why they're using it. So I'll jump on calls and then like later I'll say like, oh yeah, I'm the, I'm the founder. Like I'm one of the founders. And they're like, oh really? 
And I'm like, oh my God, I love that you yeah. don't know. Yeah, that's amazing. Because that means you're finding it on your own. Well, that means it's a good product. Yeah, no, thank you. Mm-hmm. So especially if it's like recommended, I'll be like, so how did you hear about us? And it's like, oh, I, like my friend recommended it. And I'm like, oh, that's that crazy. so happy. Why'd you name it Rella? Um, honestly, our designers did that, but like came up with the name. I'm not creative when it comes to like naming and branding and all of that stuff. I like kudos to anyone that is. That shocks me. I am not like a name person. Like I cannot come up with that. But with Rella, I was like, okay, I want it to sound like I wanted the company to feel relatable to other people. I wanted it to be about like relationships, not transactions. I just kept throwing those words around. And then I was like, I wanted it to be short and sweet. I want it to sound like a personal name, like a name of someone, but I don't want it to actually be a name. Like I don't want it to be Alexa or, you know, yeah. something like that, but something that like sounds like a person. I would love like to be in assistant. the board. Okay. You know, I would love to be in the board meeting of yeah. Amazon coming up with the name of Alexa. I know, like too. what were they throwing out in that board meeting? Right. And like, like why the, Alexa? the craziest name. Yeah. Why Alexa? Yeah. Everyone's Alexas are going to go off when they're to listening say. to I know. This. So sorry. Because maybe because it's like easy to say. I just would love to know. I know. Like what's the psychology yeah. behind it too? I'm like, sure there's it, a ton. Yeah. So it w- that was kind of like what I threw out. And so our designers gave us like five names to choose from. What were the five names? Oh my God. I don't even remember all of them. I know one of them was Posity, something like that. Okay. And then there was Rella. Then there was something about like a calendar. I don't know. It was like, I don't even remember them, but Rella was the one that was like, oh yeah. And also when you search Rella, we're the first person that, we're like we're the first website that comes up. And then Tyler, the creator, has a song called Rella. That's so hilarious. His music video comes up also. But we come up first, I think. Honestly, on brand because he's a creator. Yeah. Kinda, honestly, you know? yeah, I didn't even think about that at work. He's kind of his own creator. Yeah. yeah. So, but we're, we're the first ones that come up. It was trademarkable. So we got it trademarked. Wow. Yeah. So like all everything aligned up and I just like really like how it like flows off the uh-huh. tongue. It's like easy to remember. I was wondering because you have the real, real I podcast, know. and I was like, you ha- you have this thing with the R's, the R's and the L, like the R E L. I like you like, must like. And, yeah, okay. so funny. I don't know why. It, it, that's a total coincidence. Oh, really? <laughs> that's hilarious. What is your day in the life like? Like, how many hours are you devoting to Rella? Slash, are you still posting a ton yeah. of brand deals and stuff like that? Yeah. So thankfully, I do still do a lot of brand deals and like work on social media it's slowed down a little bit and my numbers definitely are lower than they used to be just because I'm not dedicating as much time to it on YouTube I still try to post once a week but that's been like really it's hard, hard dude it's, it's hard really hard but I do still try to post once a week I was posting twice a week for the longest time and I'm like I cannot do that anymore so once a week I'm trying um I do the podcast which I'm trying to like level up a little bit more I'm doing like more video and all uh-huh. of that um and then obviously just like instagram tiktok but most of my days like i wake up at like 7 a.m i'll work out in the morning and then by 9 a.m or like 9 30 i want to be like on my computer working on rella so pretty much it's like a nine to five i mean it's longer than nine to five but because i am still you know it's like our company it's i can still like oh in the middle of the day i need to edit something or i need to do you know so i still have like total flexibility Mm -hmm. but i do try to like schedule it like have a little bit of a structure so Mm -hmm. we actually got an office like we got a co-working space in miami yeah so it's like me and my co-founder are there i go in a few times a week um and it's just like a we work moment or it's not we work but similar yeah it's like a co-working space that has own dedicated offices in it so we have like a small office for the two of us and it's nice to just like have a place where you can you know leave your stuff overnight and all of that but yeah, I try to I try to have a structure, and then my day consists a lot of like meetings. I'll film content um, for Rella, brainstorming like what to do next. Right now, it's speaking to a lot of investors, founders, creators, going on podcasts. Like every day is a little different, and mm-hmm. I, I do a lot of vlogs. But I'm trying to like up my game and do more like you know videos that I used to make that yeah. were more like value providing. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I feel like y'all need a social media hire to do just socials just for Rella. I know. Because you're those are the people you're trying to get, everyone on socials, right? A hundred percent. Like when we I raise mean, who am I to tell you no, who you need to hire. A hundred percent. Like when we raise the next round we wanna hire someone specifically for social because I do not have time to film every day for I, I cannot even imagine. It's, and yeah, I'm still like the face of it, you know? Even like getting ready. Like you're sometimes you're like, I just want to roll over and like yeah. be on my computer and work and not have to like be ready and film. Yeah. So it's so hard for me to do that. So 
no, 100 percent. We would we want to hire like someone for dedicated for like short form video on mm-hmm. Rella or just like video in general on Rella. One million percent. And do you guys have a TikTok and everything? Yeah, we do. And like some of them do well and stuff, but it's just so hard when you're not consistent with it. And when you're not like it's just you don't have your full time attention. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it's really hard. But I know we need to because like I said, when we are consistent with it, we see a jump in view or mm-hmm. in, in like downloads and users. Do you get paid more from your own like brand deals and content creation? Yeah. Still? <laughs> Still? Okay. Yeah, no, we're we're a very like humble salary at Rella. Yeah. Like we're not like rolling in it. Like it's n- not a six figure salary yeah. or anything like that. So yeah, we I I definitely get paid more on social media. So, who do you feel like is your most valuable employee? Oh, I can't choose. That's like <laughs> <laughs> they're like they're my babies. So I mean, I'll say like obviously all of them are very valuable, but like I'm so grateful for my co-founders because they really believed in this with me, and you know we're all in this together. We're like actually like being married. Yeah, like starting a business with someone else. It's like you are marrying those people. And we just get along really well and we balance each other out. So, I mean, I'm, I'm just like very grateful that they like took a chance and, mm-hmm. and did this with me. Have you ever gotten in any arguments? Yeah, I mean, we'll get into like disagreements. No mm-hmm. one's ever gotten in an argument where we're like yelling or yeah. like being like super passive aggressive or anything like that. But That's the one nice thing about men. Mm-hmm. I feel like women are way more passive aggressive. hundred percent. And like men can... are straight up and they'll like yell at you. Yeah. But it's I, at over least, quickly. At least in my experience. 100%. But it's like, OK, you're done. I'm not going to get little like digs yes. every all the whole day. Yeah. Like oh, you didn't do this. Yeah. Like, oh, OK, I guess I'll just do everything yeah. around here. Yeah. Like, you know, it's not like that. So no. No, like if my co-founders have an issue with anything, like they'll be so straight up and be like, why are you doing this? Mm-hmm. Or like, you know, or like, I don't agree with that or I don't like the way you said this or something like that, mm-hmm. whatever. So th- they'll definitely like speak their mind. But like I am the same way with them. Like if I don't understand why they're doing something or if I, you know, just any anything that's going on, like we will address it right away. Like Love. there's not really anything that we're like, wait, I didn't know that was bothering you. Mm-hmm. Like, I know when something's bothering them and they will know when something's bothering me. Mm-hmm. So if you were to pay a creator to promote Rella, who would you want to pay? Oh, my God. That's such a good question. Um, OK, let me think. You can name a few if you'd like. Who do you so, think would be a good fit? Someone that I think would be. OK, obviously, there's like the super popular people like Alex Earl, Emma Chamberlain, like whatever. Mm-hmm. But because we're targeting like creators and like their teams, I feel like it needs to be someone that has a bunch of people wanting to be creators and like a bunch of like maybe someone that's like doing creator tips Mm -hmm. or I don't know, like I know like Colin and Samir have like a newsletter where they have like help with creator creators that are like trying to treat it as a business. So someone like that, I feel like would Mm -hmm. be really cool Um, or anyone that like helps out other creators. I feel like would be really cool. We have a list of people that we're targeting and a lot of them are like on the smaller side. But I mean, yeah, like someone like, let's say Emma Chamberlain or whatever. I'm sure so many people that watch her want to be creators too because they all try to replicate her success. So someone like that would be really cool to to promote. Mm -hmm. But I I think for us, it would have to be a little bit more niche since we're not like a product. You can just like anyone can buy, you Mm -hmm. know, we're pretty targeted. You know who would be amazing actually that I'm thinking of? Catherine Manning. Do you know who that oh is? Oh my God, yes. She would be perfect. Someone like her. Y'all should invest in her. When you yeah. do a brand deal, text me. Yes, yes. <laughs> With her. Exactly. Someone like that because people She's follow so, her. Yes, for creator tips. For creator tips. Mm-hmm. So like if she is recommending something, people will use it versus let's say like Alex Earl promotes us. Mm-hmm. What percent of her audience are creators? Mm-hmm. What percent of her audience actually like want to like use something to be organized like a lot of creators aren't that organized so they might not use us so i think it's like a mix of like mixing the lifestyle creators that i know have people that are creators that watch them with the people that are just like providing tips even if they don't have a huge following Mm because like every person watching that cares about what they have to say totally learning from them yeah yeah what do you wish you would have known earlier when you started i think one how long it takes to do something like this because it's not just a project like it is dedicating all your time things go wrong things it's expensive everything takes longer than you think and is more expensive than you think so I think that but also I wish I knew going into it like you will be fine you know like there's so many moments especially when we were raising or when we were starting like oh my god it's like what if this doesn't work and like obviously I still have those thoughts like it could fail you know like I'm not like immune to that so 
it could, but I don't know. I just like trust that it won't and like it's going to work out. And I think if you like when you're six months in of pitching something and every person you're talking to is saying no, that can, you know, be a little hard. So I wish. Oh, like, my God. Yeah. Just like hearing like, no, 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 it's all going to be OK. I feel like it's something that like everyone I, I started shifting like my mindset to be like, it's not if it's going to happen. It's like when it's going to happen. So it might take time, but it's going to happen. And mm. I'm like still thinking that today like if we sell it's like when we sell you know instead mm-hmm. of just like changing your perspective it's like literally it manifesting happen. yeah <laughs> it will happen yeah what's a non-negotiable in your daily routine i have to work out a few times a week like it's not an everyday thing but like that to me really does like keep my sanity of just Same. like doing something active where you're not on your phone you're not you know like with other people at, like unless you're doing like a group class or anything but you're very like focused mm-hmm. And you're just like moving your body and like feeling better about yourself. Mm-hmm. So I will say that that is like a non-negotiable for me. What do you do for your workouts? I love Pilates. So I've been doing like form by Sammy Clark. Oh. You should get her on your podcast if you haven't. Oh, I should. She's like, I mean, I don't know her personally, but like I really like her. Okay. And Word. she's like a little, she's a business she's woman a boss too. Boss. Honestly, every influencer is, a, is yeah. a business person. Like yes. is running a business. But yeah. some people are more into the business side yeah, than she others. Just yeah, released like clothing, like her wow. workout line. Like, yeah, so I love her. You know who I love? Actually, he would be good to promote Rella. Uh, I think it's her like fiance oh, or JT. husband. Yeah, yeah, Him yeah. on TikTok, I watch all of his videos. He would be great to promote yeah, it. Yeah, I'm like totally, totally someone. <laughs> yeah, we wanted to get him on a webinar and like it ended up like not working out. But I like contacted his assistant or whatever. And I was yeah. like, please come on one of our webinars. Okay, they're yeah. smart cookies. Yes. So like her, I really... Like I do her workouts, so or I'll just go to like Solid Core or like there's a studio called Tremble in Miami that's like a similar to Solid Core, so I'll do that sometimes too. But I'm a big Pilates girl now. Mm-hmm. I used to be like more into like lifting weights and like at the gym. Now I'm like Pilates and that's Pilates princess. Yes, and that's been really nice because I don't. Hard. It's so hard, so but like I'm not like dripping in sweat yeah. and exhausted afterwards. So I love it. Yeah. What advice would you give to another young female that's wants to have a startup? Like, what advice would you give to her? They just start like start. I think so many people think in their heads like, oh, gosh, like it's going to take so long. It's going to I'm going to have to do this, this and this. Like, this is so hard. Oh, my goodness. Like, I don't I don't know if I'm. it's it's for me. And this is with anything like starting your social media account, starting, you know, to post on on TikTok, starting a business, starting a podcast. Like, I feel like people get so in their heads about like why they can't do it or it's overdone or it's oversaturated. It's like, no, no, no. Just start like start researching start talking to people create a url get the social media handle just start doing something because if it's all just in your head it's just never going to happen like Mm -hmm. you have to do it and your first piece of content your first version of your business it's not going to be good like it's not it's Mm -hmm. gonna be like you're gonna look back at it five years from now and be like oh my god that was so embarrassing but like you have to put something out there first yeah so like just like get the ball moving and start and nothing is as hard as you think it's going to be like ev- you can figure out anything like if you think that you know nothing about a topic and how would you enter that industry that's how i felt with tech with the raising money with like an app like anything like that you can do it like if mm-hmm. I, if i could do it like you can do it like it's not everything is you can google and figure it out on your own totally if um someone has that entrepreneur spirit about them or you know they have this burning desire they've always thought they were going to make a startup or start their own business or whatever the case is what resources would you recommend them to um listen to or check out or watch or whatever are there any like podcasts or youtube channels or just like what resources would you recommend them to like dive yes. into and learn from okay so the first one that i listened to that literally like changed my life <laughs> i think it's called the startup podcast i'm pretty sure that's what it's called but it's from gimlet media it's like the founders of gimlet media which was like a media company he did like a podcast vlog so he showed literally every step of the way from speaking to investors he would take a mic in meetings and be like can i record this for my podcast Whoa. and like narrate it afterwards and it was like a vlog, but just audio version. Uh-huh. Like he would like give someone an elevator pitch, but like take out a mic, even if it was just his phone and like record it and like put it in this podcast. And it was Whoa. so cool to see every aspect of the business mm-hmm. from like literally the idea to it launching and like him raising a bunch of money and all of this stuff. 
that podcast is incredible. I'm pretty sure it's called a startup podcast. Uh, I will double check. You can send me the and link. Then, and we'll put it in the description. Okay, perfect. And then the other one would be just how I built this is a great resource. It's a great resource. I love listening to how I built this. Um, and then I'm trying to think of the other podcasts and things that i oh slide bean is a youtube channel whoa i've and never heard of that yeah they are a startup themselves they do like ai presentations or something like that but they have so many resources for startup founders in like tech startup founders whoa about all of these terms that i said pre-seed seed like what are what like vehicle are you so raising you money language. on yeah. yes like uh, so informational in like such an easy way to understand it and so that was like I literally ingested like all of their videos when I was first mm -hmm. starting and even now. So those wow. Is are there great. a skill you wish you would have learned like earlier or in college? I don't think it's a necessarily like a skill I wish I learned, but I wish that I was more involved in entrepreneurship in college. Like I wish I knew more founders. I wish I knew, you know, look, maybe shadowed someone that started a business or worked at a startup or like instead of a bigger company. You know, like I really wish I was more involved because when I had to start this, I built my network from scratch pretty much. Mm -hmm. And like, it would have been nice if I had a network already. Mm -hmm. So even before, if you were just an entrepreneurial person, just start meeting people that are in that world because mm -hmm. you never know like when you might need them or when you might like want to reach totally. out to them. Um, what about someone that's graduating high school and they're like, oh, I don't know what to major. I like love watching YouTube and yeah. like want to have my own business one day. What would you recommend they major in? I honestly don't think your major matters. Like, I really don't. I think that you can major in business, marketing, mm -hmm. engineering, whatever. And like, it is whatever. Your major doesn't even need to dictate like what job you're going to do after school. Like for me, I mean, I could have done anything and still been where I am today. So like, I don't think your major matters. I think just figure out kind of like what you enjoy doing and what you think will be valuable. And I also think like for me, I wanted like if I did marketing, for example, I don't think I would have learned that much because I was doing that on my own already with like social True. media. Mm -hmm. But because I did engineering, I feel like I learned a lot because that's not something I would have learned on my own. Mm -hmm. So if you're someone that like wants to learn maybe a different skill set, but you're doing like YouTube on the side, don't be afraid to do something totally different either. Because like, I totally agree with that. It doesn't matter. Like you will get especially like five years out of college, like you can network your way into any job. Also experience is the best yeah. form of education. So even if you, you know, don't major in what you end up in, like experience is more valuable yeah. anyway. Just focus on networking in college because that will land you a job more than your degree will. Wow. Like do not, like I just like don't think your major matters at all. Do you have all. any networking tips? Uh, just like be bold and reach out like mm -hmm. most people will not respond like that you just need to know that like it's like most, acting yeah like just audition yes. audition 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 most people will leave you on red or not respond or not open it who cares like where would you be if they if you mm -hmm. didn't send that message exactly where you are when they don't respond so like mm -hmm. send them because you never know who does and that one person can open up so many doors or one person introduces you to someone else who introduces you to someone else and like then your network expands and grows and just talk to people be like hey this is who i am like i'm really interested in learning about this you have 15 minutes to talk mm -hmm. i thought that was so fascinating how you were on the tom ward show oh thank did you did you pitch yourself or yeah. did he ask you no i, I pitched, pitched myself yourself. that yeah. is awesome yeah how did you, you do it so I actually hired someone for one month at Rella and I knew that like podcasts help with like Rella's growth, obviously. So I set I like had him pitch me to like a bunch of podcasts. No like, way. Yeah. So I, I actually hired someone for that and he pitched me to a ton of podcasts. And that's the same thing. Most people say no, but then you get people that say yes. So that was really cool. I mean, he was a huge one. He's huge. Yeah. And he's so cool. Oh, he's so cool. He's I love so his nice. podcast. Yeah. Yeah. That um, was really cool. What, did you pitch through email or DM? Email. Mm -hmm. But I think like for me, I've done every way of pitching. Mm -hmm. I've emailed, I've DM'd, especially like use your strengths. Like if I know that they don't have that many Instagram followers or they're active on Instagram, I'm like, okay, I have a blue check mark. I might show up in their inbox, yeah. you know? Nowadays, I'm like, everyone has a blue check mark, but like still, it's a little different. So like, I'm like, okay, I might show up in their inbox. So I'm going to pitch them that way. If they're active on LinkedIn, I'll like message, I'll maybe like comment on one of their posts first and be like, loved this, whatever, just so that they see my name. Yeah. And then I'll message them on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And then if they don't respond, I follow up. Like, yeah. I will follow up, like, two times. After, if they don't respond three times, I kind of, like, okay, whatever. But I will follow up, like, again and again because you just never know. Um, and, yeah, just use your strengths. Whichever social media platform you see that they're active on, mm -hmm. 
do it. <laughs> is there a business rule or tip you live by? Um, I think for me, it's just always been that I'm so impulsive. So like just try things and do mm-hmm. things like don't overthink. I think like you just need to jump in and like experiment and try something out. Figure it out as you go. Yeah. Are you dating anyone? I'm not. <laughs> not? What's your dating life look like? Uh, pretty much non-existent. You're like, I'm dating my app. (laughs) Yes, exactly. No, I was in a relationship for four years and we broke up last year. Okay. I remember this guy. Yes. Yeah. So we did break up last year. He's a great person, like nothing bad to say about him. Um, but I've just like, that obviously was like very emotional to go through. Yeah. And so I think it's taken a long time to like heal from that and like Mm -hmm. move on from that. And also now I just like. I am so bad at small talk. Well, no, I'm not bad at small talk. I hate small talk. Yeah. We're and in I, a dating scenario, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. And I don't want to do it. And like dating apps for me, I'm like, I don't know if I like you just through your profile. And it's <sighs> hard for me to like Same. message someone and be like, what's up? Like, I don't know what to say. And like, you know? I'm like, I'm not interested. It's no, like I'm hard not. to pretend. Exactly. Like, yeah. I am interested in someone once I meet them. And I'm mm-hmm. like, oh my God, they're so cool. Like, I want to get to know them more, you know? Mm-hmm. But just from like a few messages, like, I, it's hard for me to get interested in mm-hmm. you. So, and I've never ever liked someone or been interested in anyone through like DMs, messaging, like every person I've ever like had a crush on or DM'd or I mean liked, it's been because we've met in person and I like like them, you Mm -hmm, know? mm -hmm. So it's really hard for me with dating apps. I've been on two dates on dating apps and like two other dates separately. Um, And none of them have really like gone anywhere. (laughs) Like, (laughs) Do you struggle with men being intimidated, the house down boots by you? I don't think so. I always wonder what that means. Like when people are like, they're just intimidated by you. I'm like, but what does that mean? Uh Like maybe there are some men that are like, I could never date someone that was insecure. Like, okay. Well, I was just going to say, I think it's another, it's a nice way of saying they're insecure. Yeah. Because I find that a lot of creators, female, like boss ass bitches struggle with dating because some man is insecure about me making good money from yeah. my silly little videos yeah. that actually do provide value mm-hmm. and entertainment for people. They do. But for some reason, it's so challenging for them to wrap that around their head. Because and they're they, working like a big boy job and like... Yeah, which, what yeah. does that even mean? Yeah. And they're insecure that, you know, their girl or the girl they're on a date with is making more money than them. Yeah. But I'm like, that is so bananas yeah. to me no i know i so like i haven't encountered thankfully anyone that's i felt was insecure mm-hmm. about that at that's least great. but i also don't really i feel like i need to get better at like pitching myself like i'm like uh, like when people are like what do you do i'm like uh like i'm a creator and i also like started a business I, i'm not i don't sound like confident when i say it and i need to get better at that okay because like i need to just be like oh yeah i'm a founder of a startup yeah. you know and like a content creator i mean like, I just that's need to, crazy like, say it you know So I think I get like nervous with that because I'm like, oh, they're going to think it's like stupid or something. No, I would be like hard eyes. Yeah. (laughs) If a guy said that to me, I'd be like hard eyes. Yeah. That's hot. No, same. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I've the dates haven't really gone anywhere. I'm not I haven't noticed any men that have been intimidated yet. Mm -hmm. But maybe like that's what I'll tell myself when someone like doesn't like me. I'll be like, they're just intimidated by me. (laughs) Yeah. But no, they just haven't gone anywhere. And like, I don't. I don't know. I can't date anyone insecure and I can't date anyone jealous because I work with two guys that I like speak to more than I'll speak to anyone. Like mm-hmm. I like speak with my co-founders more than anyone. So I'm like, you can't be jealous if you're dating me. You have yeah. to be like very comfortable with me having like guy friends. For sure. How's it like living in Miami? I love it. I really, really love it. Where like, in Miami are you? I'm in North Miami, but okay. all my friends live in like downtown Brickell, the beach, Coconut Grove. So like very central so I'm always down there um but I love it I've made such a good group of friends there I love the weather and people always think of Miami as like party city you know you do not have to do that like there's a lot of like cute wholesome things to do with your friends that Mm -hmm. don't involve like getting super drunk and like going to like 11 or live or whatever you know so I don't do those types of things but it's nice because people visit you a lot because they want to go to Miami so it is it's such a fun city like there's always something to do the weather is always nice weather is always like great like i just like really really love it Mm -hmm. similar to la honestly it reminds me a lot of la i Mm -hmm. think Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. do you like it more than new york i do living there i like it more than new york i love visiting new york and it will always like be one of my favorite cities but like i would not want to move back there because the quality of life compared to miami is just like you can't even compare it like you know you have like a nicer apartment miami's very expensive but you have 
nicer quality of like you have just a nicer mm-hmm. quality of life than like living in a tiny apartment in New York. The weather's bad. Like you're wa- living in a walk up. You have like mice, like all the, you know, it's just yeah, like roaches more uncomfortable. Uh-huh. Um, everyone's moving to Miami from New York. I know so many people, especially now no state income tax. I know. And the winter, like now the snowbirds all come down. Like everyone from New York that has a remote job is in Miami for six months uh-huh. of the year. So like whenever I go out, I'll like meet people and I'm like, Oh, like, where do you live? And they're like, oh, I'm actually living in New York. I'm like, oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, well, Natalie, this is so fascinating. I'm so excited about Rella and to use it. Like with my manager, I'm literally going to be like, hi. Yes, Can please. you join this with me? Please. Um, I'm so excited to use it. I will definitely be keeping the Making Moves listeners uh, in the know about how I'm liking it. Thank you. And um, I think what you're doing is so awesome and truly inspiring. Thank and you so I'm, much. I'm excited to see where it goes. Oh, thank you so much. And I hope that I can meet Joe Montana through you. (laughs) Oh, yeah. No, I'm like, I don't even know who he is. But yeah, Yeah, Um, that's so awesome. And it's so cool that I mean, like literally how many I don't know how many years ago, four or five years ago, we were sitting on my silly little couch downtown L.A. Literally talking about like our dreams. And Mm -hmm. now here here you are. I know we need to listen to that. I know. Having raised a million dollars. Thank you. You. for your startup business it's it's really awesome thanks so much and i'm so glad inspiring. we got to keep up or I catch know. up me too so. where can everyone follow you and download the app yeah so you can follow me at natalie barbu across all social platforms and then just download rella you can search rella in the app store or get rella.com amazing online well yeah. thank you so much this has been amazing yeah we're gonna thanks. go get a coffee or hang a little yeah and um be sure to follow making moves on all platforms especially tiktok and make someone else's day this week peace